I mean, but I mean by that is uh, water, oil, and gas. So uh, as I said before, we're going to explore the density differences as well as the terminal sending velocity of droplets that will start up here and then we'll settle before this uh, baffle which separates the oil from the water. Uh, uh, water is up there, water is up there, water is up there. Usually this setup would have uh, an inlet diverter which would produce a wind coming in and uh, kind of splashing as well as a mist extraction, extraction unit here which will prevent any droplets from uh, what oil or water droplets from entering the gas if it were to reach that point. Uh, there are a few different types of uh, separators. There are vertical and there's are couple of horizontal separators. Horizontal separators are fairly cheaper than vertical separators, but uh, vertical separators do tend to take less space, uh, and they are commonly used in more ways where the spaces are limited. Uh, horizontal separators uh, are meant for um, handling large feed flow rates, and they're uh, uh, suitable for uh, streams that have a uh, high gas flow ratio. Uh, with less fewer sludge uh, and sediments. Further on the other hand is, uh, is, uh, is, is much, much better at handling uh, streams that have a lot more sludge and sediments such as sand from the over sand. Uh, in terms of sizing, this is one of the governing equations where uh, <coughs> is proportional to the barometric flow rate and is proportional to the velocity of the end of the end of the vessel. Uh, to get a reasonable uh, uh, length of the diameter uh, of the vessel, a ratio of a length, a ratio of length, of length to diameter of 2.5 to 5 is used in the in industry to standard range, where the length is 2.5 to 5 times the diameter of the vessel. Uh, so uh, an assumption, a reasonable assumption, is made for the diameter of the vessel at first, and uh, using that ratio, uh, final value of uh, the length of the vessel is computed. So a uh, reasonable cost for this uh, unit is around forty thousand dollars. Um, we could range from above or below that, depending on uh, other equipment that you might have to install. Um, in my opinion, the big set there is a very good spot in the oil and gas industry that they found almost that every oil um, well over the side. Um, they have low operating costs, so they only have to find an issue, and they get for themselves in the long run. Um, so uh, at some points, maybe you have to hire an operator or a technician to come in and just be in the now every once in a while, but that's low in terms of operating costs. You don't use any power, but just be in the center of the Thank you very much. And a few references. Uh, this is a really good program uh, that's available at GOAT, controlling the gas flow process. Uh, and uh, just for your information, we also have a PDF uh, online service that tells you exactly how to size a separator step by step. Uh, the membrane structure, 
which we chose them to be low fiber because it has a higher area to volume ratio. This allows for a more compact design and easy setup. Yeah, once we update that, we can know how many membranes we can set up in parallel to compensate for the flow rate. Um, for the operating cost, uh, it actually um, divided into four main components, which is the membrane replacement, cleaning cost, energy consumption, and the labor. And then we can see that the membrane replacement actually um, is the major component of the operating cost. It can go up to 50%. So in order to uh, estimate the cost, we have to know the to know the memory lifetime and the rate of replacement. So um, for a membrane which is used for one to five years, the cost for replacement is twenty dollars per meter square, uh, meter square. Yeah, square. And then if it's a uh, an older, like for a twenty year membrane, the replacement cost can go up to two hundred uh, dollars per meter square. And then uh, to estimate the energy consumption, we can look up, we have to consider the power and the efficiency of the pump. We have to also consider the total flow rate of And then these are the two references that we found that it's useful.
treated ours are bioreason production of vegetable oil. So in the actual reaction, you react fatty acids that come from the vegetable oil with an alcohol like methanol. And you get glycerol and the methyl acid chains. And these chains are what the bioreason is made up of. So typically, the scope of our project is focusing on the uh, reactor to the separation stream. And come out of the reactor, you can either go through distillation calls or go through distillation calls in um, a centrifuge. And we focus on the two for the centrifuge. So the two for the centrifuge it has a bowl at the very bottom, which uh, it has a torque applied onto it. And it puts a centrifugal force into the centrifuge. The uh, feed stream, as you can see, comes down from the top. And it shoots out a nozzle at the bottom. And the uh, centrifugal force separates the uh, liquids based on their specific gravities. So going into the uh, centrifuge, we have a glycerol methanol mixture, which has a light, lighter uh, specific gravity than the actual biodiesel. So the biodiesel will go towards the wall and escape out the uh, top through the um, heavier side. It's a continuous process. So the nozzle um, is continuously shoot up the bottom, and there's two holes at the top, one close to the center where the methanol glycerol mixture comes out and one on the outside where the bodies are composed. And then you can add send the glycerol methanol mixture if you want to further uh, separation. Alright, since this is uh contaminants Um, which means you have to send it through this uh, 
vessel which is packed with uh, alumina and uh, also lime, which will help strip out residual uh, HF. Anyways, in, uh, in my process, when I built it, I found that we needed a column of about 1.6 meters in diameter and uh, 5.5 meters. So total cost for this guy was uh, 5.38 million just because of the Monel, basically. Um, operate, operating costs, operator attention, you'll probably only need a fraction, maybe a tenth of an operator's time to, to run this. Maybe one operator would run the entire HF population unit. Steam was significant because it comes in really cold from the reactor and you have to heat it up in some parts of the installation column about 200 degrees. Maintenance, 3% of fixed capital, electricity to run the air cooler, and for a total operating cost of about $1 million per year. Anyways, here are some um, surroundings that if you guys are interested. One of these is for uh, size of the station column, and one is about the HF location.
when you look at the operating costs for uh, the unit itself, it's uh, fairly nominal in terms of uh, renovating parts, uh, pumps, that sort of stuff. Added meters uh, per unit, they were about a couple hundred dollars a year, which is just running a two-horse motor the entire year, very, very low cost. Uh, the pumps are a little bit more expensive because you're operating around 2,600 gallons per minute, depending on uh, what your feed rates are going to be. The majority of the costs are actually from your raw materials, where uh, your solvent needs to be uh, refreshed every so often. Uh, the way we looked at it was about once a month, you're going to be going through and evaluating your solvent to see that uh, it's actually viable to keep using it. Because some of the upstream impurities you can start getting animated and you don't get the same ion exchange that you that's really desirable. <coughs> when we work on that, total operating costs per year are roughly around $120,000, this is a yeah, rough estimate and it could vary from a worse to a better place. Some uh, useful, useful references that we would recommend you reading are both uh, very well made documents by the IAEA, which basically go over the actual uh, science behind it and the disadvantages of each type of software.
Um, who was sized based on a typical clarifier arrangement? It was determined to have a, a diameter of 37 meters and a height of 14 and a half meters. And it is able to uh, handle a flow of 15,000 meters cubed per hour. It's great when I'm talking with the, uh, the cost. Okay, so I did the capital operating costs. Uh, what I used to size this was uh, Don Woods, and we used a circular clarifier. Uh, we found the total cost using the FOBs uh, from 1970 to 2011, and uh, we found it to be 1.4 to 3.2 million. Um, when I did the operating costs, uh, this is the slower tape speed with the skimmer. Uh, it's going to be low maintenance, low upkeep, battery rate of 12 uh, kilowatts. And that's a fair example. And uh, if you assume it was operating for just five days a year, we found a yearly rate of 12,000. And if you guys want some references, uh, Paris Handbook's one, and uh, there's another book that we found as well. That's very good. that we use, or that is used in the, in the 
and bus process is a direct contact condenser. So these types of condensers have uh, no shell or tube, and they, uh, they have a mixture of the condensed vapor and coolant liquid, and then they exit to the same outlet, and then the vapor continues to the next, um, to the next stage. So you have three, you have three condensers there just to increase the recovery, which is usually 97 to 99 percent. And here we'll talk about that. So, uh, we estimated the cost of one condenser to be about 17 to 40 thousand dollars in the table of five to five nine dollars in the And the annual operating cost we considered just water without recycle. Recycle would reduce it. Like why so that would happen way down the street. Uh, and that's about three million dollars a year, which is kind of bad. Um, we have two suggested references if you want to read more about the ventures in general. Um, section 8.6 in Gina Papa's perspective and uh paper by Alan Shawny. Uh, they would uh, Kind of a modification on the process, trying to make it more efficient, and that's basically done uh, with a better recycle for the dimensions. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.
um, which we use through the class process. Um, its purpose is to remove hydrogen sulfide from natural gas using metal and melamine, which is MTBA as its solvent. Um, what happens is that the unit acts in capture current motion between the sour gas and the methane, which is the solvent. Um, there is an equilibrium balance between the um, hydrogen sulfide gas and hydrogen sulfide um, vapor solution, where the incoming sour gas, which is acid dissolves into the lean um, basic solution, which creates that lean acid stronger base. Um, our tray is chosen to be a tower choice because of its incredibly high flow rate of natural gas at 3,000 cubic kilometers per day. All right, so this is just a quick explanation of our cost. So first we have to do our sizing of it. Uh, our tower is about 45.7 meters high, uh, 1.67 meters wide, or in diameter. Uh, it's just odd numbers because they're all like imperial units that converge just back to meters. Uh, it's 21 tray power, it's about 2.1 meter spacing. It's uh, 316 stainless steel is the best approximation we can make for it. Uh, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur will pretty much dissolve any carbon steel that's not coated, so you have to have additional costs for that. And that will come up later in actual costing, and as Ed before said, we have about 2,000 cubic kilometers per day for our flow. So we use uh, Donwood Stip 6.6 for our best estimation of this one. Uh, it's a 316 stainless steel tower with trays. So we have a 1970 base cost of about $200,000, and a bare module factor applied to it for about $800,000. Uh, scaling that with inflation to 2010, we have about $4 million for a cost. And uh, when I called up Blaine, he's the lead trainer at the Muskie Grand River site. Uh, the actual cost of inflation in 1968 from Aqua Aqua something. They would actually built the plant back in 1968, and when you scale that with inflation, it's about $5 million today, which again makes sense just based on you need different materials in order to actually build this tower. So two great references you can you guys can come find is uh, this gas purification uh, by Reisenfeld. It's a really well done kind of, uh, it's not an actual textbook, but if you go through it, it's really informative. And then uh, Dow Chemical also has a uh, brochure on gas sweetening. Uh, it's really easy to read through, so if you go to that link and it's really easy to go read through and go through the whole process. based on what they were producing at their process. So it's a very high flow rate of 